uh, July 30th, and we want to make sure that we have the time to plan accordingly. If you go to our website, uh, right there on the front page, right there, you can register your senior. Now, I know uh, at last check, I thought we had at least five. Amen. Did we? I know we have one at our house. We have, um, uh, the Mortons have one at their house. I, I thought they said Dez, is that? Dez, and then there's a couple of us. Uh, Kyle, yeah, we have a few. So, Camilla, yeah, Camilla, amen. We have a few, so please, please let us know uh, if you'll be uh, participating. Uh, if not, we can make arrangements. Uh, we'll still be a blessing, but we, we can make arrangements differently and still be a blessing just the same. So let us know. Uh, go to the website. It's right there on the front page. You can register and let us know the pertinent information so that we can plan accordingly. Amen. Amen. All right. We don't want to have to. We don't want to have to beg to be a blessing to somebody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so let us do what's necessary. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, ministry, ministry leaders, uh, or if the ministry leader is not here, vice president, whomever it may be, uh, there is a list that we are asking each ministry to uh, do to bring so we can kind of have an organized chaos of what we're trying to do. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna go through this list pretty quickly so that we can make sure that uh, all ministries are well prepared uh, for what we are asking. Uh, ushers, uh, Sister Verde, laundry detergent, bleach and dry sheets. I think it's the same thing, it's the same thing from last year. Uh, music department, uh, dishwashing liquid, Clorox wipes, cleaning sponges. Y'all got that? All right. Uh, music department, dishwashing liquid, Clorox wipes, and cleaning sponges. Ushers, laundry detergent, bleach, and dryer sheets. Mission, Sister McKinney, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, Kleenex. Same thing from last year. And youth department, uh, to, to turn the trash bags, Lysol spray, hand sanitizer. Amen. All right. Uh, and as soon as I get those or we get those registered names, we'll tell you how many we're preparing for. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I don't believe, I'm sorry, let me move to the next thing. The next thing, fourth Sunday. Next Sunday is our fourth Sunday. Uh, I, we've been slacking on announcing our family and friends day, but next Sunday is our family and friends day. And we encourage you to invite your family and friends to come out and fellowship with us on next Sunday. I've already started. I started last night. Uh, we had the privilege and honor of celebrating uh, uh, our father, uh, Glenn Dixon's 65th birthday. Uh, we had a good time last night, and I was in there inviting folk to come to church. Amen. Amen. So next Sunday is our fourth Sunday family and friends, so we encourage each of you to uh, let's help fill this house so that we can have a good time as a family and praising the Lord. All right, and then last thing that I have, first Sunday, uh, we is um, Communion Sunday, as well as we will be going to the water. Amen. Amen. We have one candidate for baptism on first Sunday. Uh, it's a loaded Sunday, so we got baptism, we got communion, and then at 4 o'clock, we uh, have that 1,000 women in white uh, service that will be held through our North Texas District Association. Uh, I will get more information out on the location. I have the information. Uh, I'll get it, make sure it's posted. Actually, if you have the emails, it's already, you already, you already have the information. But that is the first Sunday as well as four o'clock, and that's when we'll be also going supporting our very own Morgan Bishop, who will be our representative uh, for this event as well. So please, please make sure your calendars are well prepared because we want to see you in the place. On the fourth Sunday, first Sunday, we want to see each of you in attendance. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and start to uh, prepare for our tithe and our offering. Amen. Amen. Tithe and offering. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And we want to uh, be cheerful in our giving. Speaking of giving, we are also I'm getting all of them. Uh, fifth Sunday, fifth Sunday uh, is our fifth Sunday giving blitz, and we're asking all households that can and will give two hundred dollars over and beyond your regular offering to help again with undergirding some of the costs that we have uh, here at the church. We want to ensure that we continue to make. Uh, be able to make the necessary adjustments and fix-ups and all of those things here at the church. So please, please let us plan accordingly for our fifth Sunday uh, giving blitz that is coming this month as well.
growing better, getting bigger, growing better. Now for our reading this morning, we read Acts chapter 8, verse number 4. However, I'm going to do something a little odd. We're going to preach chapter uh, Acts chapters 1 all the way through 8. Amen. So we ought to get out of here by 4 o'clock. Uh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. But we will be looking at at least uh, verses uh, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and reading and looking at Acts in this particular book, what we find out is it has been said that, and I honestly probably agree with it, is that living things grow. And healthy things often grow fast. And that is actually the exact replica of the early church that is given to us here in Acts of the Apostle. Uh, the book of Acts beginning at chapter one, moving all the way through the eighth chapter out of which I just read to you is a story, the record, the reflection of rapid growth amongst the body of believers known as the early church. The early church understood what it meant uh, to see exponential, expansive, explosive growth, uh, both numerically and spiritually, as the Lord uh, God allowed preachers and servant leaders to gather together and work together to ensure that the body of Christ would be built up to become everything that the Lord told them to be. If, if we were to take a swift journey through chapter uh, through the first chapter of the book of Acts, we will find out that in chapter 1, the Lord Jesus appeared to those who had been his followers. Those who had chosen to follow him, he made them fishers of men. These individuals had been deputized, if you will, by the Lord to ensure that with every person with whom they came in contact, knew about the love of Jesus Christ and knew about the kingdom of God in which they had been invited to. In Acts chapter 1, at about verse number 8, Jesus gives them a clue as to how they were going to be able to do the work and, and it had been, and that had been assigned to their hands. He said to them, watch this, that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my, listen to this, witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the uttermost part of the earth. Now let me repeat that because that is necessary for us to understand. If we are going to understand how to grow bigger and how to get better, the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8 that Jesus has the expectation that every person of whom uh, those believers came into contact with, that you would know something about Jesus Christ because he was going to deputize these individuals that now uh, that they don't have to do it on their own accord. They don't have to do it on their own power. He says that you are going to receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you will be my witnesses starting in Jerusalem. That's, that, that's, that, that's where folk like you, uh, uh, they talk like you, you know, in a familiar place. That's where he's saying you're going to start out in Jerusalem where they talk like you, where they walk like you, believe like you, look like you, behave like you, but then you're going to go to Judea. That, that's farther out from where you've grown up from and where, where you're, not, you, you, you're not that comfortable in that location, but then you're going to go to Samaria. That's even where the folk don't even like you. 
You, they don't even appreciate you. Those are your enemies. And after you get done with them, you're going to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. Listen, he says, I want you to get better, get bigger. He says, I want you to grow better. And I want you to do this by being a witness for me. It, it was the expect, expectation that the Lord had that his church would grow. And if the church was alive, and intended to grow. May I please remind you and state what was stated from the very outset of this message. Living things grow. And healthy things often grow very fast. And the Bible says that these members of the body of Christ are growing at a rapid rate of speed because they took seriously the responsibility to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Now that's chapter 1. That's in chapter 1 when Jesus gives them that instruction. But in chapter 2, the Bible says that, uh, that what Jesus promised came to pass because God keeps his word. So, so when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place on one accord and suddenly, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting. And your Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They began speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the book says that they, it was such a phenomenal experience that there was some, because of how they were acting and how they were behaving, there were some haters around somewhere. There were some that said, no. Some not right with these fellows. They must be drunk this morning. They must be drunk early this morning. It doesn't make sense for them to act like that. I mean, no church service makes you clap your hands and run like that and smile like that. And Peter looked at them and stood and he preached one sermon. He said, listen, these folk are not drunk as you suppose. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days. God's going to pour out his spirit unto all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall see dreams and young men will shall see vision. God said, listen, I'm keeping my word. Listen, I told you that my prophet, he said, I told you through my prophet, that's what he's saying, that I was going to allow an exponential growth to take place if my sons and daughters would teach and preach my word. And, and the Bible says as a consequence of Peter's one sermon, 3,000 souls got saved because living things grow and healthy things often grow very fast. One sermon and 3,000 souls got saved. And if that wasn't good enough, by the time you get to the end of chapter 2, your Bible says that the Lord added to the church, watch this, daily, those that were being saved. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing to see that these men and women are being saved, these boys and girls are being saved, all because preaching of the gospel is going forth with power, with conviction, with authority, folks are being saved. And not only is the ministry of the word of God going forth, but watch this, we also see the works of the apostles going forth. We have ministry and miracles. And it's a beautiful picture that's being taken place because in chapter 3, that, that you may have heard before, that there's a lame man sitting at the temple gate called Beautiful. And by the time Peter and John, who were filled with the Holy Ghost, come upon this man, the Bible says, although he was lame, by the time Peter finished with him, he was leaping and jumping and praising God. Because watch this, when God does something for you that you cannot do for yourself, sometimes you can't contain your joy, you can't contain your appreciation, it'll make you leap and jump and praise the Lord. And let me just pause here for a minute and ask you, has God ever done anything for you in your life that you couldn't do for yourself? Listen, has God ever opened some doors that you couldn't open for yourself? Has God 
ever made a way that you couldn't make for yourself? Listen, has God ever closed some doors that you thought that you, you never thought needed to be closed, but you found out that there was something better in store for you? Listen, somebody can testify as much as I can. Listen, God has done so much that I can't even tell it all. So this man is leaping and jumping and praising the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 10 of chapter 3 that the people of God who saw this lame man are now astonished at the great work. That they're amazed at the miracles that the Lord is performing among his people. So we've got the ministry of the word. we got the ministry of the works. We have the preaching. All of these things and miracles taking place. And the Bible says, as a consequence, the church keeps growing. But then by the time you get to chapter 4, the Bible says that the Lord added up to 5,000 to the people of God. The church is growing exponentially, and I suspect that's because living things grow. And healthy things often grow quite fast. So the Bible now has recorded for us from chapter 2 to chapter 4 that we are up to 5,000 members. But by the time you keep going through the book of Acts, listen, they just stop numbering. They just say, these are they who turn the world upside down. It isn't it a beautiful picture of how the Lord uses the people of God who will yield themselves to his will and his way? And in chapter 4, we find out that Jesus is still up to something in the works of the apostle. And the Bible says that even their haters, Lord have mercy, their haters couldn't shut them down. In chapter 4, we learn that sometimes you have to learn how to survive the shift. There's been a shift in what has happened, and there's been a phenomenal growth, a phenomenal movement, a phenomenal productivity that has taken place, and then some haters showed up trying to shut it down. And we've learned that even when your haters try to shut you down, they ought not be able to shut you up. When you think about what God has done in your life, they, 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 they shouldn't be able to keep you quiet. And, and look, look, that's the book. From chapter 4 to chapter 5. And then now we get into chapter 6. We find out that the church is growing so much that, that, that when you get to the beginning of chapter 6, the first verse says that the church was continuing to increase in numbers. The Bible says that this exponential growth, watch this, was not because of some gimmicks and trickery. The Bible says that this growth was not because somebody decided that they was going to pull something out of a hat to make you think, oh, I need to go see what's going on. This growth was because somebody decided to preach about a man named Jesus. And, and let me share with you, you, you don't need gimmicks, you don't need tricks, we don't need to have some drama in the sanctuary for all, of, all, all you have to do uh, for is just allow God to have his way, to let God speak through you and let them see God in you. If you would just open up your Bible and say that there's a man named Jesus who still says to the uttermost. Listen, when we lift him up, I believe it's said that he'll draw all men unto himself. Exponential growth. Explosive growth. Expansive growth. And nobody can take the credit for themselves. You have to be able to testify that if it had not been, for the Lord who was on our side. We don't know where we would be. But now, now by the time you get to chapter 6, 
this business of the church has been growing so exponentially that they realize that, wait a minute, hold on, there's some folk that are being neglected in the daily distribution of food. By the time you get to chapter 6, you'll find out that there are some widows who are neglected and now this is something that just can't happen. This cannot be because the hallmark of the church then which we were taught in chapter 2 is that they came into the body of Christ and everybody had all things in common. Literally suggesting that if you had a need that need was met by the church. If you had a need, if I had a need, that need was met by the church. Everybody was taken care of by the body of Christ. Watch this, because the people of God knew how to share with other people. People of God knew how to give to other people. Even if it was a hidden halo, you understood that there's a need to share with somebody else that so that somebody else can be blessed. Listen, this is a sad Christian who, want, who wants everything, just to, all the blessings to just keep them to themselves. It's a sad believer who only wants to get everything for him or him her, herself and never share with anybody else. And listen, somebody can actually probably testify that you are grateful that somebody shared with you at one point in time in your life because you are able to say, hey, listen, I'm the beneficiary of some loving people who actually shared something with me. That's why your Bible says, that's what your Bible says, what happened. And, 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 and there are those who are being neglected. And the text says that this cannot be. You cannot do that. So now in Acts chapter 6, they are trying to figure out how in the world are we going to meet the needs of everybody who is among the body. Yeah. The Bible helps us to understand that you, if you're going to get bigger, and grow better, there are some requirements that must be met. And may I lift up just three requirements and I'll get on out of here. Listen, watch. Watch the text because the text suggests that if we're going to get bigger and grow better, it requires the assistance of some Holy Ghost filled believers. It requires the assistance of some Holy Ghost Field believers. Your Bible says that by the time we get to chapter 6, there is, that there is this ministry of the distribution of food that is being neglected. And so they look among themselves and they find seven people who are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom so that they can help to make sure that the tables are served, that, that nobody goes lacking. Now, you must see this picture. You got to see this picture. The preacher cannot leave the preaching of the gospel to make sure that everything is done. There are too many people now, and these are, these are remember, these are they who turn the world upside down. It's too many saints. <clears throat> so now, now, he said, I got to get some assistance. So I got to get some assistance from the Holy Ghost field believers. And so he chooses seven. Seven people. We commonly call them deacons. And he chooses these deacons and say, y'all have to help us make sure that all the needs are being met. But watch this, he just don't choose any old somebody. Right, right. No, they choose some folk who are filled with the Holy Ghost and have some wisdom. Listen, may I please suggest to you that it, it, it just it, if that's the case for the church to get bigger and grow better, it also might be the case for us individually. Yes. If you're going to get bigger and grow better yes. <clears throat> in this life, we have to be real careful real careful of who we hang out with. Real careful of our associations. Real careful of the folk who are assisting us 
and the progress of life. Listen, is there anybody in here who, can, who, who knows that you just can't hang with everybody and keep progressing? You can't be associated with everybody and still expect productivity in your life. Last time I checked in the Bible, Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Literally suggesting if you are going to get bigger and grow better, you got to make sure that you're real careful about the folk you hang out with. You can't hang out with, like they used to say back in the day, Lottie and Dottie and everybody, and still expect to be blessed by the Lord as a part of your life. Listen, is there anybody in here who understands what your Bible says? The Bible says that light and darkness cannot dwell together. For what communion has light and darkness? What fellowship do they have that, that neither one of them can dwell together? You got to be real careful of who you associate with. Listen, what did they say? Birds of a feather flock together. You got to be able to testify. Listen, I'm glad that I got some good folk around me. I'm glad that, watch this, God has given me the discernment. To say, listen, that joke ain't right. <laughs> oh, girl, she crazy. I need to get around some folk that I be following scripture. But watch this. But now, remember, you have to hear the conditions. The conditions are that if you're going to help, they got to be full of the Holy Ghost. And they have to have some wisdom suggesting that they need empowerment and enlightenment listen you must understand how important this business of the Holy Ghost feel friends and family really is because if you understand the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not just one who's going to make you feel good in the church the Holy Spirit is not one that who, who, who is just caught in a moment of ecstasy and just, oh, this is just great. This is, no, and, and listen, God deliver us from them saints. And I said it before and I said it again, who leave church after a wonderful experience of worshiping and say she or he caught the Holy Ghost. That's bad language. Don't use it. Don't use it ever again. If you use it before, it's bad language. Do not use he caught the Holy Ghost. That's suggesting that the Holy Ghost is being thrown around like a ball in here. And somebody reached up and caught it. That's just not how it works. It's not. Listen, you are filled with the Holy Ghost when you get saved. And you understand that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not just some good emotional feeling. He gives you power to represent him in the world. Did you hear what I said over in Acts chapter 1 verse 8? You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. God deliver us. We heard this earlier. Listen, Sister Wright, we heard it, but here it is again. God deliver us from the weak and wimpy Christians who fall out over the first sign of bad news. Listen, God, listen, child of God, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, God deliver us from those weak and uh, weeping Christians who fall out and get ready to throw in the towel and wave the white flag of surrender just because you got some bad news on your job. Be filled with the Holy Ghost because he will give power for you to keep on keeping on. Is there anybody in here grateful for the power that you have? Listen, I ain't worried about you talking about me. I got power. I ain't worried about you scandalizing my name. I got power. I ain't worried about you digging a ditch for me. Listen, you better dig too because one of them might just be for you because I got power. Power, power, power. It keeps me going on even when I feel like giving up. Power makes me, it, it has tears in my eyes and one wants me to tell the Lord, thank you just for him making a way somehow because of power. Says you need some folk gonna help you who has some power. But not just empowerment, you need some wisdom. 
You need some wisdom. You know what wisdom is, right? It's not common sense. Because common sense ain't common. It's just not common sense. It's not even book sense. Because you got educated fools. It's an enlightenment that comes from a relationship with God. So that you can see things that other folk can't see. You know stuff that other folk don't know. It is not that you are so brilliant. It's just that God enlightens you. Now, 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 now don't get this misunderstood. Don't think, oh God, you enlighten me with these numbers for the lottery. No, that's not how it works. Listen, when you lose, you lost on your own. Don't blame that old God. I thought God gave it. No, uh-uh. Listen, when God gives you something, he gives you discernment. Gives you discernment. No, don't go this way. Go that way. No, don't be bothered with him. Go the other way. Run as far as run. Does anybody here know that he has he ever given you enlightenment before that you just something just happened that said, listen, God, you must be speaking to me. I ain't going that way. I'm gonna follow you. Has he ever showed you some things in your life journey that you would just, you, it had to be God enlightening me? Every now and then you need to make sure that you surround yourself with some folk who have empowerment and enlightenment. And then you need to pray for wisdom too. Yeah. So that you might know the will of God. Yeah, yeah. And how God is trying to orchestrate your life's journey. And the Bible says when the church was getting bigger mm -hmm. and growing better. The Bible says that they had the assistance of some Holy Ghost filled people. But watch the text. Watch the text. The text reveals to us that after you move from chapter 6 through chapter 6 into the end of chapter 6 into chapter 7, that one of the people who is one of those Holy Ghost filled people, Holy Ghost filled believer, is a brother named Stephen. Stephen rises up to the top of the list of deacons. Because Stephen is somebody that's very significant. The Bible says that he doesn't only have the Holy Ghost and wisdom, but he has grace and faith and, and that, that is strong and enables him to be better than most folk would ever imagine. It says he has great faith. Great faith. Great faith. That, that, that every now and then, I, I want to be classified as one of the people that not only that, that's filled with uh, the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Listen, I want to I want to have great faith so that I can believe God, watch this, for big stuff. I can believe God for amazing stuff. I want to trust God even when it doesn't make sense to my friends and family. I want to believe God to make a way even when it seems like all options are null and void. Is there anybody in here who needs great faith to make it through this thing we call life? Listen, as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. The book says that he has great faith. He's able to stand before people and proclaim what thus says the Lord. He is one who is, has so much faith, so much wisdom, and so much empowerment and filled with the Holy Spirit that there are some folk who don't like it. Simply because, watch this, the favor of God is on him. Now this should be troubling should be troubling that there, that, that there will literally be some people who do not like you, who do not appreciate you, simply because the favor of God is upon you. This makes no sense. Makes no sense. And I wish that I wish I wish that I could announce that all those folks who are hating are outside the church. I wish that I could announce that. I wish that I could tell you that all the folk talking noise were outside the body of Christ. 
But listen, the text reveals that the folk that are talking the most noise about Stephen yeah. are a group of people called the Sanhedrin. Yeah. Some Bible told, scripture quote, hand waving, law remembering church folk. And church folk are hating on other church folk. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's sad that church folk are hurting of the church folk. How does this happen? But there will be some people who will see the favor of God on your life, what God is up to in your life, and they would rather tear you down than build you up. And then, and then I ain't making this up. That's what happened to Steve. And they called him in to question him. They called him in. They called him into an account because they see that he is somebody who is a bold witness for Jesus Christ. They accused him of blasphemy. Said on trumped up charges that he has no basis or foundation whatsoever. They said he has been blaspheming Moses and the temple. Listen, now you must understand that this is a very significant to those who are Jews. Because when you think about Moses, that's the great lawgiver and liberator for all the people of God. That's the one who enabled the people to know God's will for their lives. He's a leader. He's their, li their liberator, their lawgiver. They love Moses. And not only did they love Moses, these people that are bringing these charges, they also love the temple. So it's not just about Moses. It's, about a, it's also about a monument. They, they thought that the temple of God was the only place where you can hear a word of God from. So now they're saying, hey, if, if, they, if, they, get, if they get the folk to believe that Stephen is blaspheming against Moses and the monument, they figured, oh, we can shut him down. Yeah. We, we don't know how they do it. Y'all start, they, they start lying on folk. Start telling them different things, trying to tear down their name and all of that stuff. And so they bring Stephen in. We're now we're in chapter 7. And when he questioned by Stephen, by these Sanhedrin, they asked him to respond. Now, they were doing all right. They were making some headway. They were they was using these trumped up charges. They was doing pretty good. Then they made the mistake. When they gave the man of God. A microphone. That's what they did. Because now he's able to talk back about the trumped up charges they have against him. And he begins to speak and for 52 verses, 52 verses in chapter 7, Stephen gets to talking about this work that God has done in his life. And he starts, your Bible says, from Abraham and Moses. And goes all the way through Solomon and all the way through the prophets and then leaps over and talks about a man named Jesus. Lord have mercy. Listen, because if you're gonna go, you if you're gonna get bigger and grow better, guess what? You need to have the assistance of some Holy Ghost filled believers, but not only that, you also are required to be able to have the articulation of scripture from the Holy Bible. You, you got to be able to do that. Listen, for 52 verses, Stephen says, all right, y'all want to talk about Moses? Y'all want to talk about this? Y'all want to talk about Moses? Y'all want to talk about the temple? Yeah. He begins to talk about what God did through Moses, yeah. right. who led the people of God out of bondage, led them in the wilderness for 40 years. The Bible says while they were walking in the wilderness, their clothes and their shoes never wore out. While they were walking in the wilderness, God fell, fed them with manna from heaven every day. While they were walking in the wilderness, they had water that came out of a rock. Listen, he led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They were in the wilderness, but listen, every one of their needs was taken care of, and their wilderness was nothing but fell short and everything and nothing even ran out. But watch this, and somebody in this church right now can testify that you've been in some wilderness experiences, and you found out that the same God that was with the children of Israel while they were wandering has been with you in your wilderness. 
witness. Listen, if there anybody in here who can testify, I had no job. But the Lord made a way somehow. I didn't have as many friends that I wanted. But God was a friend that stuck closer than a brother. Who can testify? Listen, I thought the E on the gas head stood for everlasting. But God kept me going even when I thought I was going to fall out. Listen, God has been good. Even when the wilderness was wrapped all around you. So he started talking about Moses. He said, yeah, I'll tell you about Moses. He said, you want to talk about the monument? Let me tell you about the temple. Yeah, Solomon built the temple. He said, that's David's son. He began to talk about Solomon. You want to talk about the prophets? He said, yeah, they persecuted the prophets. I'll tell you about the prophets just the same. And then he goes, he says, just, and then watch this, Lord have mercy. Just like a good preacher. Yeah. By the time he got finished talking about Moses, yeah. by the time he got finished talking about the monument, by the time he got finished talking about uh, the prophets, he took the leap all the way from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And watch this, he started talking about a man named Jesus. He gave them what we like to call uh, the Jesus punchline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suggesting that before any preacher goes to their seat, y'all know the story, something ought to be said, and it, it, it's also, it's, it's like the old preacher said, listen, if you've been in church long enough, it didn't matter where you come from, how long the preacher, it didn't matter where the preacher was even preaching from. By the time the preacher finished preaching, he was going to say one Friday on a hill called Calvary. He died. Didn't he die? Every now and then you ought to start remembering that story and rehearsing that story because that's the only way by which you and I have been saved. Listen, is there anybody in here who's not tired of hearing that same old story? Every now and then I want to hear that story that, 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 that he loved me so much that they put nails in his hands crown of thorns on his head, spikes in his feet, spear in his side. He died. Didn't he die? He died all night Friday night. They left him in the grave Friday. Stayed there all day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But listen, they said you can't leave God in that grave. Because listen, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. This, listen, this right here is the truth of the gospel that we preach, that Jesus died but rose again so that you and I might be saved. Listen, here it is. But he does this for 52 verses. He's been called in by the Sanhedrin to give an account. For all the things that he's been doing by faith and wisdom and the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that he stands there flat footed and speaks the truth about the word of God. Now, this is what blesses me. He didn't have to run to the car and get his Bible off the dashboard and come back in and start quoting scripture. He didn't have time to unlock his iPhone. Push the code in on his iPad. And read Genesis through Revelation. He didn't have time to go get his Bible study notes that he had written out last week. He just had to stand there. And was able to speak from the word. Watch this. Because the word was already in him. Listen. If you're going to keep getting better in this thing called life, you ain't always got time to go running and say, let me see what Reverend said about the Bible. Listen, you ought to have some Bible in you so that when times get tough and the road gets a little rough, you'll be able to open up your mouth and speak the truth from God's word. Listen, who can testify the word I've hid in my heart? that I might not sin against you. And is there anybody in here who got some word in you who can testify that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Listen, you ought to have some word in you by now. There's nothing like being able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. Even if you don't know where to find the scripture and you don't know where it's located, you ought to still be able to say, God is our refuge and strength, a, re a very present help in the time of trouble. Listen, who can testify weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Listen, you ought to be able to holler, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthened me. The Bible says that they shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Listen, you need some word in you. Listen, that makes sense. That makes sense to be able to quote all these different rappers. Songs. And you can't give me Genesis 1 and 1. Doesn't make sense to be part of the beehive and know every rapper who named Star with Young Something. And you can't tell me for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen, the word of God still works. I was saying, Stephen stood there 52 verses, flat footed, yeah. talking about Moses all the way to Jesus. Yeah. And then the Sanhedrin's watched this, they were so frustrated. Right. They were so enraged, they were infuriated. Listen, this man that preached us 52 verses. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how to get rid of them. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how to get them to stop. But that, then the Bible says that at the end of chapter 7, yeah. they ran him out of the city and stone him to death. Okay, wait now, Jesus. Hold on. I'm your witness. I'm doing what you told me to do. And now I've been run out of the city and stoned to death. The Bible says that he took a page out of Jesus' crucifixion manual when this was happening. And while they were, they, they were, they, they, he was dying, he lifted up his head and said, Listen, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Don't lay this charge on them. Listen, he died right there in the midst of the people. It's a rubble situation now. Stephen is gone. And the Bible says that now the early church. They have now encountered the day of persecution. Remember that. Remember, chapter 2, it was the day of Pentecost. Hey, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have a good time. Ain't it good? Chapter 8, now we're in the day of persecution. They're being persecuted over and over again. And the word says that Stephen has now been stoned. Their prime leader is now gone. Philip comes in, he takes the charge, but Stephen is gone. How much these folk must have felt to see this happen in such a horrendous way. The Bible says that they, they that if you read in verse 4, chapter 8, that as a consequence, yeah. Yeah. the word of God spread mm -hmm. and they kept preaching mm -hmm. the word. Listen, man, I finally suggest it's like you're ready to get out of here. Uh, that if you're going to get bigger and grow better, it's going to require not only Holy Ghost filled believers and not simply the articulation of scripture from the Holy Bible, but it's also going to likewise require some significant heavy burdens. That's the final point. Before I leave this place, yeah, I'm saying it's going to require some significant heavy burdens. I know, going to school, I've been taught preaching, know how to preach, got a doctoral degree in preaching, amen. You normally know, leave and close out a sermon with folks clapping and shouting and having a good time. But the good news, but just as it is now, I expected for it to get quiet. When you start talking about the requirement, of some significantly heavy burdens. If we're going to go bigger and get better, it's going to require 
are heavy burdens. And the Bible says, even is gone. Now the church begins to be persecuted. There's a brother named Saul. Y'all may know him as Paul, but remember when he was Saul, he was going door to door. Pulling Christians out of their house, putting them in prison. Persecution has set in for the church. It's rough now. It's, it's tough right now. It's a season that nobody wants to endure. The Bible says in verse 4 that they kept on preaching the word. And the word kept spreading. And by the time you get all the way down to verse 8, you will find out that the word has now spread to a town called Judea. Didn't I tell y'all that earlier? That you shall receive power. Once the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to be my witness in Jerusalem where they know you. Then Judea. And the ministry has now from chapter 1 in Jerusalem all the way to chapter 7. Now they, they've been some persecution. Now they're in a tight spot. Now they have, they've been somewhere where now they have burdens to endure. Now their ministry has moved from the holy city of Jerusalem and spread out now to Judea. Literally saying that you just couldn't stay in the corner of Cliff and Lake. They had to go to the rest of Dallas. And then to the suburbs. And then all throughout the state. And then to the uttermost parts of the world. They had to go everywhere that their ministry would take them. And the only way that they were enabled to do it was that they had to deal with some burdens. If they never had been persecuted, they never would have had as much productivity. If they never had been burdened, they never ever would have known that there were some benefits that come from some burdens in your life. Mr. Andre Crouch, if y'all know, he, he wrote a song not too long ago, a while ago, through it all. Yeah. Yeah. And when he got to that third verse, he says, I thank God for my mountains. And I thank God for my valleys. I thank God for the songs that he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know what God, that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what, I wouldn't know what faith and God could do. So he said, through it all, I've learned to trust Jesus. And I've learned to trust God. I've learned to depend on his word. Listen, there's even another preacher that wrote another song that we also know. He said, I won't complain. He says, because I found out somewhere in there that all of my good days outweigh my bad days. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord, and I won't and maybe I can help somebody remind you that if you've never gone through hell if you've never been caught it in your life listen you wouldn't know what being strong and courageous you wouldn't be the strong and courageous man or woman that you are right now had you not had those words I'm done, the door is open, but can anybody help me by saying, listen, as I look back over the shoulder of my life, you didn't like what you was going through, but now that you're on the other side of it, now that you're on the other side of it, you can tell yourself, listen, I'm a little bit stronger, I'm a little bit wiser, I'm a little bit better. Now that I'm on the other side of it, but hat is going to require some significantly heavy burdens. But watch this. Even though those burdens will come, stand still. 
still and know and listen to the voice that says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He's told, listen, he won't put more on you. Now, don't get that misunderstood. Don't get that misunderstood. That's not a phrase that says, oh, I'll be all right. It's just going to be a little bit. What he's going to put on you is going to make you tired. It's going to make you frustrated. It might make you mad. It might make you just want to almost throw in the towel. Because what he's doing is he's building you up. Listen, I can't take this towel and just...
Get to know him. Take God at his word. Look at me. I'm a living testimony. Getting bigger. Growing better. God wants all of us to increase. God wants this church to increase. God wants us to move in a direction individually that will have you stopping in your tracks and listen, this ain't nobody but God of how I'm going right now. This is nobody but God that's keeping me right now. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you all so much for sharing and being here with us on today. Listen, it is my sincere hope and prayer that something was said that we can take it and apply it to everyday living. That our walk with God can be strengthened. That we can have something to stand on a true solid foundation on Christ. That we can make it just a little bit further. Listen, I pray uh, for each and every one of you as we get ready to leave this place that God would order your footsteps, that he will protect you, that he would heal you, that he will grant you the desires of your heart, that you will know that God is still standing by. Amen. Let us be reminded Wednesday we will be here. Uh, I apologize for those that couldn't watch and stream while we was uh, going. It was showing me that we was live, but I guess we wouldn't. But listen, had you been here in the house, amen. amen. We all learn together. <laughs> Y'all see how I put that right there? So come on into the house on Wednesday. Uh, we can have a good time together in person because sometimes technology fails. Amen. Amen. But there's nothing like being in fellowship one with another in the house of God. All right. Uh, let's all stand if there's nothing else. I will have all of those things uh, that we're asking for each ministry uh, posted to our website uh, so that you can go on and see uh, what we're asking for our uh, college-bound graduates. And please, please make sure that you get those registrations done today, preferably, preferably, uh, hopefully tomorrow, so that we can plan accordingly. Amen. Next Sunday, fourth Sunday, family and friends, invite, invite, invite. Let's have a wonderful time with the Lord.